The politicians weren't exactly champing at the bit to be back in Canberra, it seemed, with just a real let's just get this done and get out of here mood to the sitting. The Prime Minister was in Japan, leading a delegation which included John Howard, Kevin Rudd, Tony Abbott and Malcolm Turnbull for Shinzo Abe's funeral. But Anthony Albanese returned in time to give Optus a drumming over what looks like the biggest data breach in Australia's history. When customers hand over their data to companies in Australia, they expect that it will be kept safe. Privacy law changes, including bigger penalties for breaches and deadlines for when customers need to be notified, could be legislated as early as this year. The Optus saga almost managed to outshine Mark Dreyfus's big moment introducing legislation for a federal anti-corruption commission into the parliament. It will have the power to investigate ministers, parliamentarians and their staff. The legislation has most of the things people wanted, but there was one pretty big sticking point, public hearings. Why is the exceptional circumstances test necessary when it could lead to protracted legal challenges and hide corruption for longer. The crossbench and the Greens want more of them and think the exceptional circumstances threshold to hold a public hearing is too high. But someone who is pretty pleased with that threshold is Peter Dutton. If it's a show trial and it's a witch hunt and the process is being abused, and there are vexatious complaints, then I have a problem with that. The National Anti-Corruption Commission, NAC for short, could be up and running by the middle of next year. Meanwhile, in the Senate, things were a little worse than usual, even for the Red Chamber. Green Senator Maureen Faruqi had moved a censure motion against Pauline Hanson after the One Nation leader sent a tweet telling Faruqi to piss off back to Pakistan. Like many migrants and people of colour in this country, I've been told to go back to where I come from hundreds of times. Why? Fruki had dared to tweet about the Queen and colonisation. It was a racist slur against me and for her supporters. After receiving a barrage of abuse in response to Hansen's tweet, Faruqi and the Greens moved to censure Hansen, but the Senate amended it to condemn racism at large, to try and keep the debate civil and not repeat Hansen's words. Not that it worked. But you learn to make up. May I remind you to address to the chair with your remarks, please? There were pleas for understanding. This is a sensitive matter. Discussions have occurred to keep this debate respectful. But then Hansen inflamed the situation. I make the offer also to take her to the airport. Leading to this response from Green Senator Jordan Steele-John. Uh, Senator Birmingham. Uh, Senator Birmingham. Faruqi has now made a complaint to the Australian Human Rights Commission, making the point that Hanson's comments would not be acceptable in any other Australian workplace. Thankfully, we have reached a crossroads in defining the kind of workplace we want to be. Whether we get there is another story. Still in the Senate, and the Territory Rights Bill led to some more high emotion, this time of the compassionate kind. Liberal Senator Jane Hume told the story of the passing of her father, a devout Catholic who was able to have a beautiful death through Victoria's voluntary assisted dying laws. We told him how much we loved him. And about three minutes later, he very calmly and very peacefully and very quietly died. In 2018, Senator Hume had voted against a bill that would give the ACT and the Northern Territory the power to legalise voluntary assisted dying. But now she's had a change of heart. They have used the arguments that I once used, all reasonable arguments, Section 22, unicameral parliament. It's obviously a very personal issue for some, but we saw this with marriage equality too politicians not truly understanding the impact of their views until they've had personal experience. I say to you, who am I to deny you the choice to leave this earth in the same beautiful way? Given MPs are elected to represent constituencies, not just their own views, you would hope not all compassion and empathy would need to be learned or come from personal experience, and instead an understanding of shared human experiences may promote them to vote. We live in hope.
But now the focus shifts to the budget on the 25th of October, which will also be the next time the Parliament sits. Jim Chalmers tells us it will be a bread and butter budget, but there is expected to be another rate rise between now and then. And with fuel prices expected to increase by at least another 25 cents now that the excise pause has expired and the general cost of everything, the pressure is on for some sort of solution to cost of living. We'll keep you posted.